Hey, my name is Jordan Benkelman. I am the talent manager at Revive Health, and I am going to spend some time today talking to you about interviewing and being a better interview candidate for jobs and internships and college applications and everything like that. Um, as part of my job, I look at tons of resumes. I interview tons of candidates. Um, so I have some tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way. So I'm gonna walk you through a couple of those um, and hopefully make the interview process a little bit easier for you. So first things I'm gonna go through are some resume rules. So here's some do's and don'ts. So you've probably heard of the one page rule, which is that your resume should be about one page long. So that's front and back if needed. Uh, and really no longer than that. Recruiters don't have a ton of time to read through multiple page resumes. Um, cover pages are great, but really only if you are customizing them to the jobs that you're applying for. So if it is a copy paste cover letter, I've gotten a ton of cover letters that have the wrong company name or the wrong recruiter name um, as the candidate has just kind of pasted it to every application. So it goes to the wrong company and it looks really sloppy. I would always suggest that you customize your resume. So you can put together a basic resume, but if you're applying for different types of jobs that, that might require you to kind of show different projects that you've worked on, it would be always better to customize that resume for the job and the company that you're applying for. And then design, it, it doesn't hurt to have a nice looking resume. So there's some really good templates that are for free on Microsoft Word that you can use. Or if you're feeling like you want something a little fancier, there's websites like Etsy where you can buy really nicely designed resumes um, for five to 10 bucks that you can then put your information into. So I suggest that it's definitely a good investment if you have the, the ability. So here's an example of a good resume like I was talking about. So this one is designed a little bit better. It's super straightforward, simple and clean. It's one page, um, has the tools on the left-hand side that are relevant to the job that this person was applying for, shows the companies that they've worked for with a short um, blurb about what they did at that company, nothing super long, um, uses the company logo so it's easy um, to kind of understand where they worked and a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, and you can see this is kind of a bad representation of a resume. So tons of words, too much information on one page would be a lot to read for a recruiter who is reading through hundreds of resumes or hundreds of applications for a single job. So when you look at the, the two here, the first version is definitely the one that is going to stand out and be easy to read for a recruiter. So definitely keep it, keep it nice and simple. LinkedIn is going to be super important. So if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, this would be a great time to get one. Um, recruiters are definitely using LinkedIn to fill positions and find candidates um, and do research on candidates. So you definitely want to start a profile if you don't already. Um, and you want to start networking. So you want to start connecting to companies that you, you want to work for or dream companies. Um, even, even the people that you're interviewing with, if you get that ahead of time and you know who you're going to interview and meet with, go ahead and connect with them on LinkedIn. Start, start learning about them. Start seeing what their career progression was um, so that you can have a little bit of that information going into your interviews. You, you want to keep it professional. So this is not like Facebook. This is not like Instagram. Um, your profile picture should be a photo of just you, a really good headshot. Um, you can take a headshot with, an, with a phone camera more, more now than ever, and it can look very professional. So take some time, take a professional looking headshot. Um, make sure your, your LinkedIn matches your resume. You wanna have the same information, same amount of time, same companies. Um, everything should be consistent across the two of those as recruiters will, com will compare those to see if there's any discrepancies. Um, and you can be a little bit more detailed in your LinkedIn. You can add more projects. You can add more detail to what you did at each job because um, there isn't a length requirement for a LinkedIn resume. The dress code. So what should you be wearing to an interview? Um, my suggestion here is ask. Ask your recruiter what you should be expected to show up in on your interview day. That's always a great place to start. But if you don't feel comfortable doing that, go to their social media. So I've put here um, Revive Health social media and you can see this picture in the top left corner is a picture of an actual meeting in our office. So you get a sense for what people are wearing and you can kind of match to that tone. Um, my best suggestion is to kind of level up one level from whatever you can find um, on, on their social medias. You don't want to be underdressed. 
Uh, it's definitely better to be overdressed. I've never left an interview with a candidate and thought, man, I wish they would have dressed more casual, but I definitely have left interviews where I said, I wish that candidate had dressed a little bit more professional. Do some research. I have talked to many candidates when I ask them, hey, what do you know about Revive Health? And the answer is, oh, not a ton. Why don't you tell me? And that's, that's fine. I, I would love to talk about Revive Health or talk about the company I work for, but you definitely should do some research ahead of time. We want to know that you're interested in what we have going on. So there's a couple of things you can do is ask for the interview team's names ahead of time, if possible, so that you can do some basic research on each person and have an actual conversation with them rather than just kind of a generic cookie cutter conversation. And check out the website. There's always good information on the company's website. We have a blog on our website. You can see actual things that are written by our employees and they, they may even be part of your interview team. For any interview, you wanna make sure that you go in with some questions ready to go. You don't wanna be underprepared when they ask you if you have any questions at the end of your interview. So make sure that you have done your research, know who you're meeting with and have thought about at least three questions that you would ask each person on your interview team. And you want them to be as specific as possible. For example, if you're meeting with a CEO, you should probably ask them about their vision for the company when they started it or where they see the company going in the future. Um, and then pick a question to ask every single person on the interview team, the same question. So I usually like that to be culture-based. So ask them what they, what they think about the culture at the company and see how that varies across your interview team. My last point of advice here is to save any questions you have about benefits or pay or time off or anything like that for your HR or team member rather than anybody on the interview team. Your hiring manager, um, the CEO, they definitely don't need to be answering those questions for you. And along with questions, you definitely want to have answers ready so that you can avoid that um. um. Talking about your resume should be super easy. It's all about you. You know that information um, like the back of your hand, but you do want to know a little bit about how you would be an asset to the company or what you think you would be really good at for that specific role so that when they ask you those questions, you're not taken off guard. You don't want it to come across scripted, but you definitely don't want to hesitate. Uh, not hesitating on those questions will leave a really good um, impression on your interview team. Know the process, know what you should be expecting through the whole whole process of interviewing. So ours at Revive is, is about six different steps. And so you wanna know where, where along the progression um, you are at any point, just so that you know what you can prepare for. Um, this is gonna be different everywhere. So just ask ahead of time, ask your recruiter, ask whomever you have a contact with what the process is and what you can expect. Some final thoughts, um, it's definitely a numbers game. Apply for any job that you are qualified for. Apply for jobs that you are just underqualified for. Um, you, you can stretch that limit just a little bit, but don't apply for jobs that you're definitely not qualified for as, as you're not gonna hear back from those people. And network as much as possible. You don't know who knows who. Um, I got my job at Revive interviewing for a completely separate job, but my resume got forwarded. So you definitely want to, um, to network with your interview teams and your recruiters as much as possible. Know your value. Don't go in with an inflated ego. Uh, it, jobs are not all about that base compensation, but you definitely do want to get paid what you're worth. So do some market research and know what that number should be. And, and never burn a bridge. If you get a no, which you're definitely going to get more no's than yeses, make sure to follow up with a thank you or ask for feedback or, or make sure that that connection stays strong. You never know if a job will come up in the future and they remember you and they're gonna pull your name off of a list first and foremost. Uh, interview as many places as you possibly can for jobs and internships and, and anything that would require um, you to kind of go out on a limb and, and be the best version of you and good luck.